So welcome to Famous When I'm Dead. I'm your host, Sam King Davis, and this is where we talk about uh, talk to artists about how they thrive while they're still alive. Today we have the Belgian boss, the cross-hatching master, uh, and caricature master, lifetime caricature artist and caricature master Jan Optibek, everybody. Am I pronouncing it right? Is it Jan op de Beek or Jan op de Beek? Okay, it sounds like a bakery. Op de Beek. Op de Beek. Almost. Okay. Hey, op de Beek. Op de Beek. Yeah, you did it. You're the first American who speaks my op name in the right way. It's, op, it's more like op de Beek, like a bird. No, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. What is, uh, what is the op de? It's like separated. Yeah, actually, it, it used to be in history, my brother has been doing some research about that. It used to be at, but in, the, in Dutch, right? So actually, it comes from a place at a little river, something ah. like that. It's a place name, kind of. Oh, okay. So it means at the river, or at the yeah. little river. Big, big is a really small river. Ah, okay. I know the English word for big. And, mm, I know in French, but not, not in English. Huh, so when you and Stieglitz hang out, it's like a sparrow at the little river. Yeah. Yeah. I know how my name should sound in German. It, it should sound like Offenbach, like the, the composer. Oh, Offenbach. okay, cool. Offenbach. It's kind of the same thing. Bach, Bach in German is big. Okay, number I'm sorry, cut. No problem. I thought they were going to be silent, but it's really impossible. If they want to be in the interview and answer some of the questions for you, they can. Oh yeah, their English is uh, impe impeccable. Yeah, <laughs> that, really? it, that was the door. <laughs> so, um, I guess I want to start off just by like, I want to hear your origin story. I want to hear like how you got started in art and like you were, you were born in Belgium and, and, and then what? Born, born, I, was then born, what? <laughs> I was not born in Belgium. Oh, you weren't? Okay. I was born in Congo. Oh, that's right. <laughs> in the dark forest of Congo. And you know why? Why is that? Because my mother was there. And she was doing what in the <laughs> Congo? Congo. Yes. And why was that? Because my parents worked there. It was a colonial period and Congo was property of Belgium. Mm -hmm. So many people worked there. He worked in the administration in tax things, something, a normal job, white collar job. And uh, they had to, well, they stayed there for 11 years and four of the five children were born there and they had to come back. We had to come back in 1960 because there was an independence war. So we had to flee first the family and then my dad came all by himself in another way. Only women, women and children could take the plane. Mm. So well, it was kind of hectic. We, we, we were hiding in a hotel with a lot of Belgian people and <laughs> the hotel was really under fire. <laughs> wow. How My old brother, were you when that happened? I was only two. I was only two. I know nothing about it. Wow. That's yeah. intense. Yeah, there is another, a lot of documentation about that. Wow. Yeah. So the, the Congolese people rised up against you, against the Belgians? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was those days, yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. Many yeah. people became independent in, those, in that period. Right? Yeah, wow, that's interesting. I mean, what year was that? 1856 or? <laughs> <laughs> so Belgium sent some troopers by airplane, Paris, and they kind of saved us. But 
was it in what what year was it really though 60 1960 huh yeah i mean we you don't really hear any about any of that in u.s history when you go to like you know public school no. in the u.s they don't teach you about that they only learn about leopold too <laughs> yeah. hmm. so you guys came back to belgium and yeah. What happened that got you into art? I mean, was it, it seems like your whole family is kind of artistic. Well, I have never been into art since, uh, until I was 13 or 14. Oh, I okay. have never, hold, never held one pencil. Oh. I, for me, it's funny that I hear other artists say, I have been drawing since I was a child, since I was born. I was born with a pencil in my hand. That's not the case. I, I was playing outside all my childhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's all we did. We played soccer and we climbed in the trees. We fell out of the trees, things like that. But we never, we didn't have time to draw. And then came uh, secondary school, and then then I started to draw actually, but not because of the school. Uh, actually, um, every weekend, well, I have to say, my, my mom died in 65 and since then I think every weekend the kind of the family got together on Saturday at my aunt's place. She was married to the brother of my dad and there was another uncle so there were three uncles and the third one he was drawing caricatures at his work hmm. during, during his work <laughs> during the break time. <laughs> Just small really caricatures, funny things with a pen or a ballpoint of his colleagues. And he, he used to do that during the, the family gatherings too. Ah. And he, he started everything. That's why my brothers and me are drawing. Oh, so it was a hobby for him then? Yeah, purely that. Yeah. yeah. He had a regular job and probably the job <laughs> left him some time to do that. <laughs> Yeah, he was he was getting paid in a way then, <laughs> just yeah, yeah. For, for something else. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so, um, what happened at that point? Like, did you did all of you guys end up going to school for something else, or did you all go to art school, or how did that work? Well, art school in I think we all did some art school, but kind of secondary thing. We just did regular secondary school and then university or college. And, uh, but we kept drawing, kind of, yeah. So you didn't go, when you went to college, you didn't go to art school? It, well, it's kind of coming in. It's, I was educated as an art teacher. Ah. So we did get a lot of art. But my secondary school was, I studied Latin sciences. Okay. Huh, so you went to school for being a teacher and then you started teaching right away when you left? Yeah. So that was 21 when you were 21. Okay. Yeah. And you kept that career going your most of your life, right? Until last May. Wow. In one school. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so you kind of had a, like a, like a, it's like the Sweet. easy soft way. Shoot. You just slid right in and stayed there. Right. And your, and your brothers, like what happened with them? Cause well, the oldest one, Carol, you know him, maybe. He went to Vienna also. Yeah, yeah. Lodo, Lodo was there too, right? I mean, yeah. the old one, Carol, he became a, Pete, how do you say that? Physical education. Physical education, yeah. Yeah. And Lodo, he's a, a doctor, a specialist, a pathologist. Oh, okay. So he had a little, little bit less time for drawing because he studied so much. But actually, in the beginning, I well, I, I saw some children drawing, and I think he was the best artist as a child. Anyway. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So we picked up after at the end of his doctor career, and I think it's still good. I mean, it's strange that at that age you can pick up again and be be that good again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh. So the problem with him was he was too smart. He had to do something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he needed to use his brain power, yeah. He's a, he's a very good chess player, too. So. Oh, okay. He's a real pain in the ass being a brother, yeah. 
Why is that? <laughs> I always I always lost playing chess. <laughs> okay. He used to play competitions, and that's different. He studied chess. So, did you ever do anything aside from teaching? Like, did you ever? I mean, you were in publications and things like that. Like, what was your kind of other activities aside from just teaching? Uh, maybe drawing. <laughs> but I, I, is like, were you doing any kind of publication stuff, or did you do any any? I, I started publication only in 1989, so I was already 31. Uh huh. But of course, you cannot start publication without doing anything before. So I have, I must have been drawing all the time, kind of. Mm -hmm. And then that was a book about Belgian politics. And then in 91, I started working for the newspaper, political cartooning, mm -hmm. for four years. In the meantime, in 93, there was a second book about Belgian politics, because they liked it and the, the, the selling went, the, well, it sold really well. And then 96, there was kind of an uh, instructional book about how to make caricatures. That was published in four languages, but not English, Dutch, French, Chinese, and Korean. And that was your book? Yeah. yeah. Oh, what's the name of it? Uh, well, it, it doesn't exist in, in English, but it should sound like the art of caricature. <laughs> oh, okay. It's not the mad art of caricature, it's the art of caricature. Yeah, in French, it's l'art de la caricature. Uh, it's the yan art of caricature. Yeah, that one. The up, up the big, part of big, up the big, Sam King Dave. Big, big, <laughs> up the big, big. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I had a, oh man, what was my next question about that? And I had a few other ones afterwards. Some self-publication, Joe Bloom published one. So I think in total, maybe you published seven. one of your books. Yeah. What's it called? Well, um, the first one, I and there are two connected. The first one uh, I did was in self-publication in cooperation with um, Bo Hufford and, oh my God, I forget the third name. Um, it was uh, Famous Corpses. It's, it was we, Famous Corpses? Corp, corpses, like oh, the one, corpses. Like, the one, like the one behind you. Yeah. Wait. Oh yeah, this guy. <laughs> that one. <laughs> no, he's, so was, uh, he's got his people, mask on. He's okay. Uh, yeah. So it was about famous people who died. And that was um, only your artwork. Yeah. Oh, cool. And Bo was into publishing. He he wrote the thing. Oh. He, okay. So he was writing facts and or, and information about. Yeah, not, not so. Much. There was no, but there, there were not, not so many facts in the book. It was more funny thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But I, I oh, I, I could kill myself. The, the third one. No. Anyway. So we were kind of three people who worked on it. Um, and that was about famous people who died in two thousand five. So I guess it was published in two thousand six. And then we made another one, 2007 and eight, and Emmy cooperated. Emmy, my wife, she oh. made small, small illustrations in her style. Ah, with little and skeleton. And that oh, one okay. was so these. These are. Um, this is the <clears throat> same book, just people who died in 2006 and 2007. Yes. <clears throat> oh, that's an interesting concept. Yeah. Yeah, but the niche was too small. Oh, okay, so they. But you guys did two and three, so it must have been okay, right? No, I only we did one and two. Ah, there is no third one. Okay, and it wasn't it wasn't really doing that well, so you just stopped doing. Well, it. the first one was was okay actually, um, <clears throat> but I have no no numbers about the second one. It was Joe who published. So. Mm, interesting, but I don't think it sold sold really well actually. I think uh, not everybody's into skeletons and things like that. Hmm. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Do you have a copy of it? Yeah, upstairs somewhere. You have more than just one copy? 
maybe three. Um, so what it like, what was that experience like? Because I've thought about self publishing, but it's just like any other project like that. It's like kind of a lot of work for one person to take on and continue their own. No, no, it was okay. I, I did another one. I forgot the year about uh, sketching is fun. Okay. A red book, not so big, um, <clears throat> only sketches. And I did it also in self publication, but um, I asked for money to the people to support me. What's, what's the system? Kickstarter? Well, that's the name, but you couldn't use it in Europe yet. But I knew it existed, so I just did the same thing, but on my website. Okay. So I asked for money to, for people to support me, and, and I said, if you give this much, you have a mentioning of your name. If you spend more, uh, I give you a, a drawing, something uh -huh. like that, black and white drawing or a color drawing. And that way, in a couple of weeks, I had 4,000 euro. Nice. Which I needed for the book. So I, I, could, I could have printed without any risks, without any stress. Oh, okay, cool. So it was paid before I, I started. And what year was that? Kill me, Sam, I forgot. No, I would never do that. You can uh, wait, it must have, been be, must have been before 2013 somewhere 2011 or something. Hmm. So you, that was something that, that wasn't too much work for you then. That was like easy enough. Well, I, I even had money left to, for somebody to do the layout. So nice. Yeah. Um, did you intentionally wait till later in life to do publishing? No, publishing? not really. No, not really. Uh, I think I, I I started caricature was actually pretty late. Of course, everybody does a little bit. Right? I, I, I drew a few of my teachers in secondary school, but that was not really publishable. Right? Actually, I, th I think I really started 2000, uh, 1989 or something. In uh, 1989, there was a competition, a contest. And somebody knew I was kind of drawing caricatures a little bit on my own. And he said, why don't you compete? And I made a special drawing for that competition. And I, I didn't win the first prize, but I, I did win some prize. And I got motivated by that. Right? Oh. And then, boom. And then, like, let me ask you this, though, because caricatures now is essentially like what you're doing for yourself. And then you're teaching at school, right? Yeah, teaching was my steady income. Huh? So what what were you doing before 1989 on the side? Nothing. Nothing? Just okay. raising a family. I had another family. <clears throat> I have three grown-up children, too. Right? Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So you were just teaching at school and then not doing, like, for your most of your career up until 89, you didn't do any, any work? Yeah. And... Teaching has always been my main thing, you know? Uh-huh. It's, it's not just a job. I mean, it's, <laughs> you have to invest uh, some time in teaching. Uh-huh. Wow, you that's have to a you have to... really interesting path, you know. That's, that's not very common. You know, I, I don't well, know it, is, it is common in Belgium because they say you better take care of having a good job, that you don't lose your job. <laughs> so most of the people I know do, the, do it that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, maybe it is common, like, it's just that the people that I've talked to and interviewed, it's usually kind of a more, I haven't heard of anybody who, you know, I know people who have a job that's not really art related and then they do their art as a hobby, but then they kind of like turn that into a business. I but, think Garrett Holt is a teacher too. Who? Garrett Holt, the husband of Cece. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know if he's teaching art, actually. I think he does. Hmm. But uh, anyway, I, I, I started having some commissions for private things of companies, and then I had to come to the tax office, <laughs> and they said, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, I'm drawing a little bit. Yeah, we noticed. 
So you have to be, you have to become independent, they said. So I became independent as a second uh, profession. Right? Okay. Side profession, yeah. It's interesting that you like start, it's just interesting to me that you started off like learning how to teach art like just as just as a career in itself you know like i guess you you had to learn all of the fundamentals of course before you learned to teach art yeah but they they taught us art as well right i mean yeah yeah it, but it was actually a school where they it learned where they taught people how to teach yeah yeah the school was full of people who were teaching mathematics and history and okay the physical education teacher was there too and oh yeah the, the art teachers as well <laughs> do you think that the person who taught at the teaching school went to a teaching teaching school i don't think <laughs> it already existed for them the teaching teaching yeah it's just like never ending loop they're all dead they're all dead i think <laughs> but there, were, there was one particular really cool guy and he also made books for for um, primary school teachers, he made a book for them. Um, he made a kind of a thick book with really small, nice drawings, how to, to draw trees and houses on a on a on a blackboard for for classes. You know, yeah, so yeah. It was very instructional, and that kind of uh, sparkled something like hmm, making a book. That's nice because he was always bragging about it. <laughs> okay. They're like, if this dummy can do it, I know I can do it. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, um, he, he knew about my publications later, and uh, he was kind of proud of it that I did it. Oh, nice. Yeah. So let's talk about that. I mean, if that's been your, your main thing. Um, well, he's, I, not my, I, my main, he's not my main art influence, right? No, I mean, if teaching was your main thing, but... I actually want to go to something else or ask one more question um, okay. about um, it's I just find it interesting that like I guess your extra energy that you had was just really focused on your family and then when you kind of had a break in your life and you had that experience where you got a reward for or you you won something in, in that contest with caricatures in 89 yeah that was kind of the point where I started focusing on drawing more, you know? Yeah, did it, did it like open something up in you? Had it, was it like waiting to come out or it was just that one experience happened and you're like, hey, I kind of like this. Yeah, you know, everybody likes to have a positive um, response on what you do. <clears throat> and that definitely happened. Uh, it was kind of everything I drew, people were saying, well, that's great. So yeah. Uh, it makes you feel happy. You didn't, you didn't experience <laughs> that before, huh? Well, teaching is nice, but nobody says, hey, you're, you're a great teacher because you're alone in the class with your students, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I guess I was not so bad because when I retired, I published on Facebook that I was retiring and I almost got nothing but positive reactions. So. So when you were teaching, you were teaching all kinds of art, like anatomy, figure drawing. Yeah, figure drawing and then perspective and things like that. But it evolved a little bit because <clears throat> in the department where I was teaching, uh, the computer was introduced. I, I did it actually. For four years, they made me kind of head of the department. And I said, what should I do to the head of my school? And he said, Whatever you think you need to, needs to be done. <laughs> so I introduced a computer. Nobody knew how to use a computer or an Apple. And we had four Apple LCs and one black and white printer, which cost it 1,250 euro now. <laughs> and and uh, how, uh, what year was that when you first brought in the computer? Don't remember. I don't, it was a long time ago. Huh. We, 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 we were, well, I've been teaching on secondary level, secondary school level, um, but we were ahead of the colleges with the computer. Oh, wow. Yeah, really. So we had the four computers and uh, the last, the, the, the students of the last year, they were 18 years old. They said, what, what, why do you buy this 
I said, well, I think you need it. But we don't know it. I said, I don't know it either. So <laughs> what, what do you want to do, guys? You want to start now and giving me some credits if I make mistakes? Or do you want me to learn and not knowing anything about it because it will be for the next year? And I said, okay, let's start. So we did it. And then the next year we bought some new things and cool. now many, many classes are fully equipped. Yeah. Did you, uh, did, did you make images right away? Were you starting like that or do, were you just teaching how to use the computer? No, no, no. We, we worked on Apple and we worked with the Quark Express and uh, Illustrator. <clears throat> These two main things. Yeah. I would love to see an image from back then. Of what you yeah did. yeah well we we only did black and white because we could only print in black and white right uh -huh. yeah but that was really basic basic thing yeah. now i i suppose a lot of classes are probably you're retired now so you don't have a chance to bring it in but now you know you can sculpt in vr you know it's like oh yeah 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 but actually these these guys i've been teaching to were kind of uh, educated to, to do graphic design. So it was most about the three Adobe things. Uh-huh. Photoshop included. Yeah. Yeah. But everything evolved yeah, very quickly, very quickly. You were there at Eurocature whenever uh Lip brought in the, the VR sculpting thing, right? Who brought it in? Lip Camarella. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was there. Yeah. Did you I, test I, it? You tested it, right? No, I did not. I sketched him during his presentation. Oh, yeah. that blew me away. That was the first time I experienced that, and that was like, yeah, I've I've wanted one ever since. I I don't think that's my thing. Actually, I'll keep drawing flat. <laughs> yeah. There's enough to draw flat for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, the problem is you cannot follow everything. Well, for me, the way I look at it, it's like the same way you were looking at the computer. You know, I'm, I'm young enough to take that technology. That's right. That's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But what, I'm, what I mean is you cannot be good at everything at the same time. Yeah. Because you have to invest time in everything. So that actually segues good into one of the kind of formal questions that I have is like, um, if you could give one or two pieces of advice to people about how to master something, like what qualities does it take to master? Perseverance. Perseverance is the top one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I think I, that, I don't believe so much in talent, you know? <clears throat> me neither. And you know, the, the big thing about perseverance is um, you especially have to do it when you don't want to do it. That's the biggest part of it. Well, let me tell you something. I told you I don't believe in talent, but the, what I mean with talent is wanting to do something really good. And when you, when you want to do something really well, you, you know you have to invest time in it. That's talent not something weird in your head or a special gift. I don't believe in that. Yeah. Maybe some, some people, some people, Mozart, for example. But I cannot imagine that you can be an artist without practicing. You cannot play the piano without investing 20,000 hours of playing. Yeah. It's and you know, the, the thing about like Mozart or Tesla or somebody like that is like, if you know their backstory, and I'm, I'm not 100% sure because I didn't research this on my own, but um, I heard that Mozart's parents were musicians, right? Yeah, yeah, also. Yes. So, you know, if his parents were musicians and then, you know, let's say his father or his mother is playing the piano like while he's in the womb and then he yeah. gets out and he, he's hearing that music as his brain is developing. So it's like, it's not just something that comes out of thin air. And yeah. Tesla... You know, his mother um, started him off at a really early age with uh, visualization exercises Yeah. since he was a little boy. And she started with shapes and then she started with three dimensional shapes. And then she had him rotate the shapes in his <laughs> mind in his like, you know, visual image. 
yeah. are, you know, mental. I do believe, however, that there are differences in children's abilities. Right? Mm -hmm. Some are more into mathematics and some are more into languages. I've experienced it myself with my kids. So. But uh, I think you can make up a, a lot of things or, or catch up a lot of things. I mean, if you practice, 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 practice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a, a quote that I really like. I don't remember where I heard it, but it's, it's uh, motivation is manufactured. And for me, that goes really well with perseverance because there's, yeah, yeah. there are yeah. just times where like, I mean, actually, most of the time, I'm not really motivated. It's much easier to, especially these days, to turn on Netflix or, you know, go on social media. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Everybody wastes some time, which is not so bad every, every, all the time. If, I think if you focus on your job or whatever you want to call it, you might get crazy, right? Mm -hmm. You have to stay a little bit normal, kind of, and waste some time. Yeah? Yeah, there was an interview with someone who was like a marathon champion. And when the person asked him, like, how many, like, what percentage of the days does he not want to run in the morning, like, when he wakes up? Because he had every, to run. Yeah, he laughed and he said, every, every <laughs> single day I don't want to run. I can guess. I can guess, yeah. <clears throat> Aside from perseverance, like, what, like, is there any other quality that's, like, a second quality? Coffee? <laughs> <laughs> drugs. So no, I'm I never I've never been into drugs. Nothing. So this is a real clean yellow baby. Oh yeah. I can see it in the beard. It's really yeah. clean. It's getting cleaner and cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> um let's see. Why don't we talk, uh, oh, I do have one more question for you. That's just kind of like a straight question. How are you finding the situation with the lockdown and COVID and how are you making your, how are you getting through it? Financially or emotionally? Yeah, why don't we start with emotionally? Well, emotionally I'm doing really well. <clears throat> I'm kind of the, the, the rational guy. Uh -huh. I <clears throat> I have no problem with that. I'm happy to do the Zoom thing that was started by at ninjasketch.com. But it helped me a lot during this half year because during because of circumstances, my family was in Japan. They couldn't come back. You know the story. Yeah. So that helped me to keep some contact somehow. But I would never get crazy or really depressed by it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you will, <clears throat> you don't need to find a psychiatrist or something for me. I'm still okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I have the phone book in front of me, so. Oh, okay. I, just about the call I don't speak. I don't speak Czech, so. <laughs> um. Oh, that was another question I wanted to ask you about. Uh, oh, well, why don't why don't we stay on topic for a second? Um. I guess financially, you probably have money put away by now. I mean, you're retired now, right? I get retirement money, but when I was teaching, I, I thought, okay, when I re get retired, I get some less money, which is normal in Belgium. And I thought, okay, but then I will do some more gigs. Now, no. you're not <laughs> motivated, right? No, it's not about motivation. There are no gigs. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, with the COVID, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and my plan was totally gone. So financially, I'm not doing so well, but I stay optimistic, and I think next year will be a fantastic year. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah, I'm not getting attached. I'm just, uh, I'm taking it day by day right now. Yeah, but I have to look uh, more far ahead because I have children to raise, you know? Mm-hmm. But I think... What's your Thanks. oldest child from your first family? Uh, 40. 40, wow, okay. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm... Uh, I am a six, six-fold grandfather. Uh, what's your oldest grandkid? It's Sam, he's, uh, he's nine now, I think. Oh, okay. 
All right. I guess I don't feel so so young. It's now. a son. It's a son. Son. It's a good name. Is it Samuel? Yeah. No. Uh, just Sam? We're not so much into Bible stuff. Uh huh. I it, don't think any of my children believes in anything. <laughs> How come? They don't believe in anything. <laughs> uh, yeah. People think I'm Jewish. It's funny. I think it's because I have a big nose and also because um, my my name is Samuel. King, King David. Yes, yeah. Samuel yeah. King David. My name was Davis, which is like a Welsh name. Yeah, I, I was wondering where the king comes from. It comes from Kate. Oh, really? Yeah, so she has the... King. So she's the, she's the boss? Uh, it just sounds better. King Davis sounds better than Davis King. But, but, but it's, it's officially you change your name in King David? Yeah, yeah. We well, if you would be Jewish, it would be some King David Stein or something, right? Eh? King David Stein, if it was, oh, if it was silver Jewish. or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Sorry, if it was what? I mean, Jewish names are kind of easy to oh, find. Yeah. King yeah. David Stein. <laughs> <laughs> but people think my name is Samuel King David, so it's like the most... Oh, Jewish yeah, of course. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> that would be good. I, you, you should do that. <laughs> I could probably get in. I could probably get an Israeli passport. So maybe if I <laughs> if I go there, just and then you could alone. immigrate to Israel. Yeah, they would welcome you. Here is here is the king. Yeah, <laughs> I like Israeli people too. They're really nice. Yeah, yeah, they're funny, but they're kind of uh, some some are kind of fanatic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true too. I I, I, I drew I drew a Jewish guy at a at an event. Milan, almost two years ago, and he was Jew. He was from Israel, actually, and we started talking about some politics. <laughs> it was, oh yeah, Netanyahu is the big hero, Bibi. <laughs> yeah, it was, I couldn't say anything bad about it. I didn't because I, I had to be paid by my customer. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it's. Uh, I, I've had that experience too, but. Um, I guess I can guess my understand. I, am, I understand why they are like that. I know the history about this room. But there were always mm -hmm. two sides, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, I find, um, I guess I never really talk too political with people, but usually people who aren't like, I'm not talking about people who are like Hasidic or like, you know, wearing the Jewish, like. We, uh, we have them. We have them in Antwerp a lot. Yeah. These, these guys with the big hats. Yeah. Yeah. There was a, a famous singer actually that his name was uh, his, but I, he called himself Matis Yahu, but he was a rapper and a singer, and he was like Hasidic Jew rapper. He was, <laughs> yeah, he was pretty good. Yeah, he had some good songs. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we're not off topic at all. Um, let's see. If there is there is no real topic. So okay. Yeah. Well, anything else about uh, COVID? Uh, like, so what are what are the other ways you get through it? Like financially, emotionally, and what? Is there anything else? Uh, mentally, I guess that goes. With <laughs> My mind is still looking. And no, I'm really rational. <clears throat> so I, I follow the news and I, I see the the vaccines are coming really soon. Mm. I just try not to catch it because I'm kind of typical COVID patient like. <laughs> person I have the body to end up in hospital <laughs> let's talk about that for a minute because you're an older guy and you're an artist you've been an artist you're <laughs> where, you look? Where, where is he <laughs> because you know artists like don't typically really get enough movement you know like enough exercise uh, I ride my bicycle every day ah okay almost almost every day kind of uh, 20 kilometers oh really day. okay yeah what does that take, like an hour or half hour? Yeah, something like that, an hour. Yeah, mm. that should that should be enough. That's really, yeah. I, I the, I've had the thing is, I cannot walk anymore. I cannot run anymore. I have two implants in my knees because of running. I used to run a lot. Ah. Oh. And it's, the cartilage of my knees disappeared because of running. <laughs> yeah. So I have two implants, and I cannot run anymore because, well, not only because of that, because also because I broke my left knee falling off the stairs. That was they, recent. <clears throat> yeah, a couple of years ago, and they couldn't fix it anymore. So um, running is not for me anymore. Too bad. 
I can still run my bicycle, ride my bicycle. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Good enough. That's, um, that's interesting. It's comfortable doing sports while you sit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A weird a weird pattern with exercise like I, I'll go I'll get into it I'll get into it for like three or four months I'll like I'll go three times a week and stay really fit and I'll get really fit and then I'm like yeah, yeah. yeah that's good enough and then I'll just stop yeah. completely <laughs> but I, I had some goals every year there was kind of the the it's not a real competition but an event the 20 kilometers of Brussels mm -hmm. so every year in winter I got more fat because it was too cold for running. And then when spring came, I tried to get ready for Brussels, which was in May, I think. So it's easy when you have a goal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I have been running those longer distances quite a few times, yeah. mm -hmm. like half, ma half marathons and things like that. Oh, you never did a full marathon? No, I was too heavy. I was still 85 kilo when I was on my thinnest. <laughs> oh, okay. Was that, is that, are you tall? I forget how tall you are. I'm 186. Oh yeah, you're talking, you're talking uh, centimeters now. Of course. <laughs> you're over six feet. You're six feet, I think. I'm six, six feet, almost two. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah so. six feet two, definitely, yeah. Why don't we talk about your artwork for a minute? No, okay. <laughs> No, let's not talk about me. Yes, me. <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> You're kind of famous for your cross hatching. Yeah, which is totally overrated. I know some. I know a couple of guys who are much better than me. <laughs> I'm just a copycat. So you you prefer um, like ballpoint when you're doing that? No, I don't prefer it. It's a terrible thing. Yeah, okay. Because because sometimes it gives a a black spot at the end, a kind of greasy thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you do ballpoint, you're always keeping a, a cloth in your left hand to to wrap it clean and then you you, you make some lines and again <laughs> make it clean. Oh, okay, okay. That's terrible because if it's happened your drawing is ruined. That's not that's not what, what is happening with a pencil. Pencil is mm -hmm. much it's easier. Using like a really thin mechanical pencil, right? Like two millimeter. <laughs> you mean for cross hatching pencil? Yeah. I'm That's gonna... not two. That's not two millimeter. It's a half millimeter. Half millimeter. Wow. Well, even we you all, you also have 0.3, right? But I think one half millimeter was okay. But I. When you really make a good cross hatching pencil, you don't do it with one pencil. You use different pencils. Okay. I in the the in Are my you days using I spent like different. Say again. Days? Are you using different hard? Uh, I started. I started with the six H in the days when I was experimenting to get the the, the best result I could six H and then. When I couldn't get darker with 6H anymore, I switched to 3H and then to HB, and I stopped with 2B. That's all. Mm -hmm. But what, what most people underestimate is the quality of the It has such a big influence on the darkness of your drawing. I missed when you use it. I had a little breakup. The quality of the what? The paper. Ah. If you use a paper that's too soft, you can never have the same result as with hard paper. Oh. I don't I don't mean shiny, but hard, really hard. Huh. Like cold pressed paper. Yeah, my favorite brand used to be Schiller's Hammer. Okay. I think it's German or Austrian or Swiss. Sound German anyway. Schiller's Hammer. It was really hard. And you could really very nicely put layer upon layer without hurting the, the paper. Mm, mm -hmm. yeah. um, I want to look at some of your, like maybe you can pull up Instagram. I want to, maybe we can talk about one of the pieces because I'm, I think I'm seeing one right now. I don't think there are many pencil uh, cross-hatching things on my Instagram. Oh, I mean, not really, really, really finished. Not really, really finished. Yeah, you got one on here. Um, 
Billy Butcher. That one looks pretty finished. That's the ballpoint. That's a ballpoint. Holy cow. Yeah. Yes. This magical ballpoint. Man, it I think like it's, it's I think it's half a euro or something. It looks like it really <laughs> looks like graphite, maybe just because of the gray. Yeah, but you know you can draw like this. And you can draw like this. Yeah. With the ballpoint. Oh, oh so you're getting you're getting the lighter yeah. lighter marks. What about uh, the Linoid Brezhnev? Oh, that's a really old sketch, maybe 30 years old or 40. <laughs> Whoa. It's just pencil sketch, a dirty pencil sketch. Yeah, it looks kind of more sketchy than your, your cleaner stuff. Yeah, what? yeah. I just try to find things to put on my Instagram. I consider Instagram as a, as a dog, which you have to feed regularly. Yeah, so. I don't like that, but yeah. What it's about... Kind of you hobby. <laughs> what about Robert Fisk? Uh, that was the ballpoint too. Really? Yeah. Oh man, that's that's like superb ballpoint right there because it just totally looks like a pencil to me. I guess you don't have many pencil ones. It's still, it was still in my scanner. Here it is. Is that A3 size? No, A4. Or maybe even a little bit different because it's kind of a Japanese paper. It's kind of a manga paper, <laughs> but it's hard too. It's really good paper. Nice. Yeah. So it's ballpoint. Um, I want to talk about. Okay, I see. I see the pencil ones. Like the pencil ones look. I guess you don't really have any finished ones on here. Maybe an old Al Hirschfeld. I don't know if it's on it. Here's a group of, of some of them. I have a few in a, in a, in somewhere that I still have to make it scanning out to put on my Instagram. I, you know, I really like the more rough ones, like Carl Ballatine. Yeah, I, I like rough drawings too. Like sure. how, quick, how quickly do you go through, like what's from start to finish on like this one? Uh, which one did you say? Uh, Carl Ballantyne. Did I draw Carol? <laughs> I'll check my Instagram. I don't know which one you talk about. Yeah, you put that one up there September 30th, but it could be an old drawing. Oh. You know, what was really cool is when I started on the Charles Bridge, um, I was just making friends and trying to kind of connect with the artist up there. And most of them knew you, but I suspect that they- Yeah, you, you mentioned it one time, but I, I, I don't know who it was that you asked. You probably don't know them because they're like, uh, most of them aren't really doing much except for caricature on the bridge, like live caricature. So they're not really- uh, Okay, working. they were local people? Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. So which drawing was that? I don't recall the name, so I don't even know who you're talking about. Carl Valentine. Valentine. Valentine with a V? B with a B. Valentine. I don't know. Sometimes I draw somebody because he's in the news or because he died or let me ask you about your um your ballpoint ones. This yeah. Because they look really finished to me, like they look pretty fine. They're they're definitely finer than the pencil ones you have. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, There's so, nine hundred nine hundred drawings now. So the what? <laughs> my question about that is your pencil. Okay, so for example, this one with uh, Billy this, Butcher. This, this is almost finished, kind of. Oh, is that pencil? Yeah, that's pencil. Okay. Um, are your like the Billy Butcher one? Is that a higher, like a finer quality than your pencil ones that are a fine quality? Well, most of the pencil drawings on my Instagram are sketches. Uh huh. Yeah, I know, but I'm I'm asking about like um, the level of like uh, fineness of line quality. Like the ones, like the Billy Butcher one, looks really fine to me. Yeah, but I I made pencil drawings that are finer, more fine. Okay. But only a few because it's so time consuming. Yeah. And the, the thing is, you know, when you draw a caricature, 
setting up the sketch or the beginning of, of, of drawing is the most creative part. And then afterwards, it's just monkey work. Yeah, uh, I know. That's, that's why I like caricature, like live caricature. Yeah, me too. And I, I also like the interaction with the, with the people, you know? I like talking to people. Uh -huh. But it is meditative, you know? It, like... Yeah. And when you do live drawing after maybe 15 or 20 minutes, you, you, well, you Americans call it the zone, right? Or the flow. Yeah. I always say people, I always tell to people that the Americans call it the zone. So it's the flow? <laughs> yeah, people, people use the zone, but I, I, okay. I call it flow. I call it flow. Anyway, so it definitely exists, you know? Yeah. It's, it's kind of a situation where you have a hyper possibility to, to see things. Yeah. You just have to watch your, your person like uh, in a blink and you can draw the whole face. Yeah. It's <laughs> Which like never happens in the, in the two or three first drawings. <laughs> yeah. It's like a higher consciousness. I, I you know, I want to be able to get into that zone. I don't think it's a higher consciousness. It's a, a better way to make the transfer from re receiving the impulses and yeah, getting them into, yeah. into your brain. It's a more, let's say, like a better word for that would be, it's like a more efficient way of thinking. You know? Yeah, no, not thinking. I don't think it's thinking. Nope. It's Receiving, like a... Because we don't reflect on it. That's, yeah. that's thinking for me. That's the key. That's the key about it, is that you're not... I thinking. think you should not reflect when you draw. Yeah. Huh. That's a good... That's an interesting... Probably, but maybe it's wrong. I have no idea. That you should. I, I just don't feel like thinking when I'm drawing live gigs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, I was actually thinking about that. Uh, speaking of thinking, I was thinking about that um, before I called you about like the difference between someone who already has like their way and their approach and then, and someone who is like trying to experiment and try new stuff. And I was thinking about it because the conference is coming up and I'm, I was thinking like, what am I going to do? Am I going to really try to do something that I already know how to do? Or am I going to really try to push it? And I think I'm going to just do something that I know how to do because it's more fun that way, you know? Yeah. I, and I think that this, especially this year, it's more about having fun and trying to see as many people as you can because we didn't see anyone. Yeah. Really, yeah. really. Right. Yeah. And of you know course, I will do my myself. best bit. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I don't think that, like, uh, Iska, well, I mean, it depends on who you are. But for me, like, it's not actually a good time to push myself. And, like, the pushing comes before Iska. Like, when I get there, I should already, like, have some, like, thing that I'm doing or that I'm already, like, good at, you know? Well, and, that, you, you can show that in your studio piece. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm still thinking which one I'm going to use. So well, if, if, I, if I believe my Instagram, I should use my chess player. Which one is that? The orange one, the re very recent one, the Queen's Gambit. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing that one. Um, te technically, technically the, 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 the ballpoint one that you mentioned is, is better, but it's difficult. Yeah, and it's difficult to make a choice because it's it's all when you when you well it's my opinion you know when you participate in a competition I want to have a good result and it's difficult to predict what other people like. Yeah, I don't think that that's a, a really good strategy. I think that's dangerous to do that with, with competition because. It, it's like then you're letting you're letting like the winning influence or other people's opinions influence. Well, that's how that's how competitions work, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> but I think that that's there's something about people who like don't do that. It seems like they win easier because they're not really. It's like when you're you're doing it for somebody else, you don't really the path is not there. I, I, I only do it for myself, right? Yeah. But the problem is if you have a few pieces, you can make a choice. It's difficult to choose that one. <laughs>
Okay, I'm looking at your Queen's Gambit one. Yeah, that's it, the, it got the highest appreciation on my Instagram of all the Instagram thing I did so far. Yeah, it's a nice one. But then you it have to wonder, you have to wonder like is it because it's such a good painting or because people are watching that show? But that's important too, you know, that that's very influential in people's decisions. Also when you at a convention it's important who you draw. Yeah. Not that I'm always very competitive about it, but if you really want to win something, you don't draw an artist who is sitting in the corner all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's better if people know the subject. Yeah. You know, I, I've had like, personally, like my experiences at ISCA have been like, I've put, I think I try too hard, actually. Yeah, I think it, it should enough. be a normal thing, kind of growing. Yeah. Yeah, like I, one year I worked my ass off. I didn't even, I hardly talked to anybody and I like spent so much time and like looking back at the drawings now, they were like a little stiff. They were okay. good, but they were they were stiff. There wasn't like that flow or that energy there. That's that's what there. That's what it was missing. It was missing flow, and yeah, that's yeah. hard to do. That's hard to get. I think in the studio, it's easier for me to get when I have a thousand customers in line because then I'm okay. just like, I have to let everything go and just like, you know, trust my instincts. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But let me ask you about um, this piece, um, John Lewis. Uh, yeah. So um, I guess I want to ask you like a cross-hatching question. Do you have a method of um, the way you're going about like a step-by-step -step part of your... Uh, yeah, but I didn't apply it. I only used one pencil for this one. So. I guess my question is, is like, do you do all the directions in one line and then you go back and do the... No, no, no. I, 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 I make them in all kinds of directions. Uh-huh. At the same time just depending on what part of the face you're in yeah uh -huh. you know there were there were three influences about cross hatching for me that was david levine okay i was very happy to meet him in 2004 and then I spelled was, levine. david levine you know him right he's one of he's one of the two big guys the other one is hirschfeld but i didn't know him as a young guy because I, I only saw David Levine's work in the newspaper in Belgium. His work was in the Belgian newspapers, not Hirschfeld, because it was about politics, American politics. Mm. So that's why I was getting interested in, Bel in, in American politics. I know everything about American politics since the 60s <laughs> because of David Levine. <laughs> okay. And he was really happy when I told him that he was very influential on me and not Hirschfeld. Because uh -huh. I... By that time, I knew it was kind of uh, playing between them. Oh, okay, okay. It, it really made him happy. So um, I, I love his work. I love his work. Yeah. And who are, who is your third influence? Well, I only mentioned one, actually. The other one is not her show. It's Franquin. Franquin is a Belgian comic artist. Falcon. No, Frank, and maybe I can put it in the chat. Where is the chat here? Blah, blah, blah. Well, I if you spell it out, then... Okay, it's a F R A N Q U I N. Okay. And you, you pronounce it the French way, Frank. Uh-huh, okay. He's a comic artist the best Belgian comic artist in my opinion. And he was really good uh, with the pen and ink and especially his later work, he made um, a book about uh, Idée Noire, which means kind of dark ideas. It was kind of dark humor. You, mm. you, you will recognize it, I think, if you see it. And it's only black and white. It's really, really the best. And he was a master in cross hatching. Mm. He was also good in caricatures, but that was not his, uh, the way he was making money. And then the, the third guy is, of course, Jean Mulatier, the French guy, Mulatier. Yeah, that sounds familiar. How do you spell it? He, he, he was in Vienna. 
actually. Yeah. Mulatier, you write, you write M U L A T I E R. Mulatier. Was I? Did I meet him? Was I there with? In the I don't know. I don't know who you meet. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I was asking like, what what year? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. I was I only. Him. I only went twice. I've met him a few times. He was in Holland at the mini convention. He was in Tehran when where I met him. I don't know. I met him in France also. Once so he. So go ahead. Uh, let's have a look at uh, some artwork from people, from the Patreons and the fans. I don't have Patreons. No, so I, I have Patreons. <laughs> ah, you do. I have three loyal loyal Patreons. The rest oh, of them, that's, that's it. That's great. <laughs> so I like to I like to get their work up there when they want and they have a one of Alfred. No. Uh, we can we can start with Alfred if you want. You see, I thought he was one of them. Yeah, Alfred's one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a very nice guy. Yeah, he's really nice and supportive. He was in the Zoom sessions a few times, but yeah, lately he, he's not visiting anymore. Yeah, one of the one of my favorite caricatures that I ever did in the Zoom session was of him actually. Ah, really? Okay. Um, I drew him a couple. Of Time. I'm wondering, I, I just wonder about uh, Alfred because he says he's been drawing for, I think, like six years. Which is pretty late to start. Yeah. And I don't know how much he practices, but last time I talked to him, that he said he said he was practicing a lot. But it seems did like... He, did he follow something like Tom Richmond or something? I don't think so. Right? I think he has that book. I, I'm not sure. Not the book. Okay. It seems like he's having a hard time, like grasping the fundamentals to me. <clears throat> I, I, honestly, I don't think he's drawing a lot. Okay, that might be why. He, you sent me the photo of a gentleman with a blue suit. Yeah, and but then the, and then the drawing. But oh, that's what Alfred did. Yeah. What what he's drawing? Well, it's kind of okay. It doesn't fall apart, but I see so many things in that photo that it didn't use. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So what do you what's like your the, like the raising eyebrow, the rising eyebrow, and all the mimic around the face, around around the mouth, and things like that. Uh -huh. it's, strange, it's strange that it doesn't use that. Well, I don't know. I almost feel like Alfred should practice portraiture before he tries caricature. Oh, I don't know. I, I think it's about general drawing techniques a lot too. Like, let, let me ask you this. This is a question. Alfred has his own question for you, but I have a question. Like, what is the one thing, one thing that Alfred could do to help him improve and grasp the structure of the face and like, there, he's just like, for me, that's what it looks like he's missing. But you're the you're a teacher, so you probably see more than I do. I I think he should work longer on one piece. Uh huh. I think he he's drawing some lines. He's erasing some things, but I don't see any shadow or really fine things. And try to watch better. You know, he's drawing the eyes kind of in the same way, but if you look at the photo. They're totally different. Yeah, yeah. And all the lines around the mouth are disappearing. Yeah. The wrinkles, you know? Yeah, I see that. The, too. the, the characteristics of a person, you know, when you, this, this guy he's drawing is kind of 45 years old. When you're 45, you have some lines on your face, right? Yeah. So. Um, another thing that I noticed right away is the, it, I can't see if he maybe tried and then he erased it or something, but it, there's no buildup. It's like, it's almost like he's trying to put the curtains on the building before he puts the foundation down. Yeah. I don't see, I don't think you always have to draw a line in the middle of the face and things like that. But what, what you should do at least is 
kind of when you're finished or when your basic sketch is done, try to watch it in a mirror or something. And then you see a lot of things when they are wrong. <laughs> oh, look at it in reverse or upside down. Yeah. 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 And drawing teeth is another difficulty I see because you you added another drawing. I think it's Kamala Harris. Uh, he didn't specify who that is, but I'm guessing that's who he was trying to draw. Yeah. So the the problem with teeth is that you see too many dark lines and it ruins the whole thing. You know. Yeah. The, this drawing is not so bad, but the, the the teeth are not good. Yeah. Too many dark lines. Yeah, you gotta yeah. taper the line. Uh, I think that's something you can learn, right? Uh -huh. So that would improve his drawings a lot. And then mirroring when he's doing the thing. Mm -hmm. And maybe copying some other people's works or shadowing or... Well, that, that actually brings us to his question. Um, this is Alfred Reed. Just wondering, um, how do you find your style when um, learning caricatures? And is it okay to copy to see what suits you? Um, thank you very much. And thank you, Sam, for the, um, <clears throat> giving me this opportunity. So, okay, there were kind of two, two questions in this, right? How do you yeah. find your style? I can easily answer it with a quote of Steve Silver. He said, you don't have to look for your style. If you practice enough, your style finds you. Ah, I like that quote, yeah. That's really cool. And uh, the, the second question was, is it okay to copy other people's works? I think it does, it, it is important to do that. Um, maybe not the whole thing, but trying to find out how this, how this artist uses his techniques. Why, why is the work looking good or better than mine anyway? Um, I, I think, and maybe she will kill me for that. I think Yoni Wu, you know Yoni Wu? Of course, I went to Korea with her, yeah. Okay, Yoni Wu once told me that every new student at her, or any people who wanted to work for her, had to make 100 drawings of me. Of you? Of you? Yeah, that's what she told me. <laughs> I hope it's true, I don't know, but that's what she told me. And I don't think it's wrong. It, it must be really boring to copy my drawing. <laughs> oh, that, all 100 that, drawings of yours. Yeah. I thought to 100 copy. drawings of your face. No, 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 no. That was even worse. That would have been worse. <laughs> <laughs> the eyeballs would just melt out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kind of surprised and flattered that she was using that technique. Maybe it worked for her people. I don't know. And now I see on Instagram that one of the people who is in the, in the Zoom sessions as well, is copying my work too, and she mentions my name. So I, I, I appreciate what she's doing. And I think it's not bad to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll just... Uh... But I don't know if you really have to copy. You can study also and try to apply techniques. Yeah, I mean, the quote there that comes into my mind is from Picasso, that good artists borrow and, and, and great artists steal. Yeah, um, probably. But, you know, for me, that's been really big. Uh, and it's, it's, it's not, you can't, you definitely don't get the same value out of it if you just look at the work. It's good, that, it's good if you look at other people's work, but if you really, like, sit down and copy it, it's about your hand knowing how to do it. It's not about your brain. Yeah, yeah. I, be, I believe that the hand has a memory too. <laughs> yeah. They say muscles have memory in a, like, yeah. you know, in a, in a roundabout but, way. But you know what is good about making 100 copies of somebody else's work? It means that you make 100 drawings. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's actually the good thing about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And a lot of my, uh, a lot of the techniques that I like are like fusions of, you know, two different artists. Like I like the way Kiko draws yeah. this nose. So like on when I'm slow or if I have you a- mean, You mean this nose? <laughs> she's got, she does this beak nose sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that one too, I use that sometimes. But um, yeah, so, so what I'll do is I'll do, I'll go through her Instagram and I'll just do a whole page of her noses just 
or or yeah. if I want to, I'll do that with really eyes. useful. That's really useful. Yeah. And then what happens is, is like whenever someone sits down, I have like a bigger vocabulary of how I can interpret that note. Exactly. Yes. And then my hand like automatically knows how to do it. It like remembers that the practice that I've been doing. And you know, a lot of my style is really like a combination of the people that I like and the, the artists that I like. It's just But you, you have kind of two styles, right? Well, I guess I I mean the work that I see behind you is totally different that the, than the thing that, that you do digitally on Zoom or like on, on the, the American like the, the barbecue thing is totally different. Yeah, well, these are different mediums. So I know, I know, but the approach is totally different too. Yeah, yeah, it is. I here you kind you kind of try to make um, a realistic caricature. Of course, it's exaggerated, but you try to finish in a yeah. way, right? Yeah, elaborate, and the the barbecue thing is totally different approach. It's more abstract. Well, it's also digital yeah i know what you mean i know what you mean it is more abstract and it's faster as well i have less time um but i think that the just the way my brain works i have other styles too like you i don't know if you've seen my i have like a polygram style that's like shaped yeah, together i have i have had students who did that too and i i think it's kind of um i think it's uh leading to nothing actually honestly uh-huh um, because you see it everywhere and it always looks the same oh uh, yeah well i mean i i did like probably once i reached about a hundred of those oh really and, you did <laughs> well, yeah, yeah wow then i started like figuring some well, things out talking about perseverance yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I do those challenges, you know, like the 30, 30 drawings in 30 days. Oh, uh, yeah, I did one, one or two. Yeah, yeah I think that if, if you're practicing a new technique, like out of 100, you'll have like three maybe that you like, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm convinced that if you convince yourself to do one, uh, a whole month of ballpoint drawings, your last ones will be better than the first ones. Yeah. <laughs> so it's useful. Right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but then but, we come back to practice, practice, practice. Yeah, it's definitely about practice. But for me, yeah, my styles are all over the place because my, my interest and my brain is kind of all over the place. I mean, I, I even sculpt also. So yeah, yeah, yeah I, I did that too. <laughs> yeah. I don't know when, if that's ever going to stop or like if I just need to embrace that or. I did, I did some exhibitions and I, I sold almost everything, but this is one of the last ones that I found back on my attic. Like, oh, that's cool. What what is that? It looks like it's clay. It's uh, a yeah. ceramics. It's ceramics, right? What's the subject? What is that? Oh, it's a woman. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So I made a lot of these uh, kind of uh, exaggerated persons. Uh huh. They were also kind of caricatured, but invented things. Right? Uh huh. They did. But working with clay is really nice. Yeah. And then the, the fact that you have to work hollow makes it really difficult. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise it explodes in your oven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm really inspired by Wilford Wood, the speaker. He's gonna- You told he, me, yeah. I yeah, like to watch it. He's so cool. His, his work is so, so fun. It's so like authentic and kind of um, earthy and sort of real, you know, like. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so that's Alfred. And let's look at Tan. Well, this guy has a really good technique, you know? <laughs> yeah, he, this guy, I don't know. This is one of those guys that like, uh, I don't know where it comes from, but he, he lives here in Prague now. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And he, like, I, I met him at a figure drawing class and like right away I was just blown away by his figure drawing skills. Okay. Um, he was you like, can he can draw. Yeah. And then he, the next time I saw him, he was doing gouache and he was like making these gouache paintings in like five or 10 minutes that were just blowing me away, you know? And then, you know, any, anything he tries, he just picks it up and he's like, he's gold. Like he's, he's just got it. 
all the different mediums, like any digital yeah. medium or, you know, so, and he's young, you know, he's like early, like, I think he's 30. These 30. are the worst. Well, the young ones the young ones are the worst yeah. <laughs> well you know like his he practices a lot his job is uh drawing he draws for like slot companies okay uh, slot games and stuff and so he makes these like cool environments and he's yeah. a comic book nerd which you know comic book nerds are like usually really good artists so i don't know yeah Anyway, so yeah, he's he's great, but he's he has trouble with caricature. So well, I see three sketches, and the first one is this one, then this one, then this one. Yeah. So here he he misses the likeness, right? Yeah. The positioning of the eyes is not correct, and it's getting a little bit better in the second one. The third one is really good, although I think it's a little bit flattering. That's why I was asking, is it a self-portrait? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see the, it, picture, it, the reference it's picture. It's a very nice face. It's a very nice face and usable for commissions. But I don't think you will win. Um, how should I say? Appreciation in a caricature way, right? Yeah, yeah. This is the guy. Yeah. So... You can do more with this face than what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. He looks. But he has skills. He has the skills. I mean, definitely. He looks maybe. too pretty in like in his caricature. Yeah, too pretty. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'll send this drawing to my future father-in-law. This is how I look. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think but, it's so hard for him because he is like so good at taking in like what's actually in front of him and then putting it through whatever medium he's using. And, and it just like, I can, I it's can like see a photographic that. kind of memory. So when he tries to step outside of that, it's really difficult for him to exaggerate. I think you have to uh, discourage him to draw caricatures because once he will have the, <laughs> the knowledge how to do that, he will be too good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want that competition. Yeah. No, but he, he can get very far if he practices more. Yeah. I mean, not about technique, but about distortion and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You mean, I think oh, there is a different. Uh, watch out, distortion, that's a bad word in the caricature world. You mean exactly. I don't think so. I don't think so. That's a great word. Well, distortion, then you lose likeness. Then it's not actually. No, that's not true. That's not true. So you, so I should get Tom Richmond on here and, and have Oh yeah, I, I, I should have a, a couple of drinks with him in the cafe in a bar. Yeah. I, I have to agree with Tom about, I, I agree with his thing about distortion about 90%. There are some people that can distort and still get likeness, but. Uh, oh, oh, by the way, I have to tell you something. You made a mistake. Um, <clears throat> you were, I don't know what kind of interview it was or something. You were <clears throat> drawing somebody and then you made the, the lower part of the face longer. And you said, I have to think about Tom Richmond because he's talking about the 100% thing. If you make one thing larger, the other one gets smaller. That's still correct. And then you make the person, you erase the, the head and you make the head smaller. But actually, that's not necessary anymore because you make the lower part longer. You already did it. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. You what, see, what? you did it. You did, I don't remember where it comes from, but I thought, oh, he's doing it twice. Oh, maybe, maybe it came from the Dave Chappelle video that I made. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's the. I don't think it was the drawing, but maybe that session. I mean, that recording. Okay, okay. Yeah. But you know, when, when you enlarge one thing, you already apply that theory, right? Yeah, yeah. If you make this longer, this automatically gets smaller, right? So, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but of course, you can still make the head smaller, but then you do it twice. Right? So, uh, what about uh, Tan? Is there any tip or advice that you have for him? Make more caricatures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe look at other caricature artists and try to copy. Yeah, 
Kiko, Manny, that kind of style. Yeah. I think I think Tan would probably be good with practicing your work because yours is is still rendered well enough and it still has enough realism where yeah where those those guys style I think might be a little bit too far out of his like comprehension. <laughs> I but I I would like to talk about that distortion thing. I mean I th I think Tom means that when you go too far and you lose the likeness, then you're doing the wrong thing. He uses it in terms of the law of constant mass. Yeah, okay. sure, but I, I I know you can lose the likeness when you change too much or in a wrong way, in a wrong way. But I've seen drawings of uh, some fantastic uh, people and you still see the face. I don't get it anymore when I don't recognize the person. Right. I have problems with some drawings of Chris Chua and that's kind of style. Uh -huh. I like Chris, he's a fantastic guy. But sometimes the drawing is getting oh, everywhere, right? Yeah. And for me personally, that's too far. I don't say it's bad. But I, when I have to start watching the drawing for half an hour and say, okay, that's an eye and <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That, for me, that's too much, but I'm an old guy, right? He's definitely, like, riding that line, you know. Manny rides good. Somebody, somebody should do it. Yeah, yeah, Manny rides it, and uh, Matt Garcia. Uh, Manny, Manny, no, no, Manny is doing something different. Yeah, yeah, but he's still riding that line, right? Like, he's still, like, on that edge. He's on the same edge. No. No? Okay, where is Chris, Chris, Chris Chua is kind of cutting his whole drawing and then throws the pieces of paper everywhere, right? And then you have to look for an eye and a nose and... <laughs> yeah. That, that's not what's many, what many is doing. Right? You're saying that he's, he's much further along. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They're both on the... They're both definitely on the same side of the scale when it comes to... Yeah. Yeah. But I yeah, I agree. You mean, but it's, it's different. It's a different approach. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's uh, his his humor. Like sometimes he's got this humor that like sometimes I look at it and I just shake my head, and then other times I look at it and I just I burst into laughter. Like it yeah, just catches it catches me, you know. Sure, so sure, sure. I think that when you're doing something unique, um, you you know you're gonna miss if you're doing something truly unique and you're really pushing. You're gonna miss like a lot of the time, you know. But the time that you do hit is like genius. Yeah. Do you know Grigor Eftimov? Yeah, yeah. I have both of those guys' work hanging on my and wall. And the other one, the other one was Jesse Navaridi, right? This one right here behind the. What is that? A Grigor? That's a Grigor. Yeah. Uh, well, I saw him. The first time he came, he had a silver nosy and. He did fantastic work, but many people couldn't appreciate it because it was off. They thought it was off, the, 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 he misses the likeness and things like that. But this guy is a genius. That's the difference. Gregor? Yeah. He's, and he knows how to draw a body. You know, he's giving anatomy classes and whatever. He, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, and Jesse was... I don't know if he's as, as good, but he was doing the kind of the same kind of uh, exaggeration things. Jesse Navaretti. How do you spell that last name? Navaretti. It's a Spanish sounding name. N-A-V-A-R-E. I don't know. T-T-E or T-E. Oh, Navaretti. Okay. Yeah. Navaretti. Jesse. Yeah. And it was kind of the same period. They know each other really well. Well, now, Jan, we gotta we gotta move on because we gotta do the caricature drawing. Let's talk talk yeah, about persistence. Go to the barbecue. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the question for you. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, Jan Uptebeck and uh, Sam King Davis. I am very very grateful to be able to ask a question. Uh, this is uh, Chance McGee. I am uh, a caricature artist. For those listening who may not know, um, big fan of your work, Jan. As you know, I was uh, lucky enough to get a drawing from you. And uh, so, so my question is, uh, how do you 
draw the exaggeration that you get because I feel like your exaggeration uh, is sometimes mild, but you can go really, really far fetched with your exaggeration. But what I like about your work is as, as, as far as you stretch it, you still maintain really good likeness. And what I find even more interesting than that is when you draw women, especially when you really exaggerate their features, they don't look grotesque. And I struggle with that. So any advice you have on how to really push the exaggeration to maintain likeness, but specifically any advice you have on making women look beautiful, but also like really, really, you know, exaggerate in a crazy way. And I feel like in my mind, I have to choose between one of those two features. I can go really crazy with the exaggeration or I can maintain the likeness or the beauty in, in, in the person that's in front of me. And I feel like you're one of those artists that can do both. So any advice you have on that would be uh, very useful. Thank you in advance. That's a nice question. <laughs> the funny thing is that it's, it's an important thing when I, what I think about when I'm doing live gigs. When I draw live gigs, I work for a client and I don't want anyone to be hurt, even though I sometimes do grotesque things. But when I draw women and I see that she has a nose like this, you know these women, right? I never draw them in profile or maybe not even three quarter of you. I draw them in front of you. And then you see that maybe she has very pretty eyes. And when you draw a really big nose in front of you, the nose doesn't look that big. But the, the, the eyes will pop up, right? So they are always happy. Women are always happy when I draw them live. And the good thing is when they notice, other women keep coming and you can draw women all night. <laughs> That's the good thing. But it's kind of the same, same thing when you draw on paper. What's the purpose of your drawing? You want, I, have some, I have drawn some ugly women, I mean, or women in an ugly way. <laughs> okay. Uh, some, I, there was, there was um, a woman connected to the Trump administration. I drew her really ugly. That was on purpose. Do you remember her name? Oh, I think she had a Jewish name. Do you remember her role? Oh no, the, the one I drew was, was kind of a member of uh, the house, I think. But anyway, well, yeah, I, I will, maybe I find the drawing and I will send it to you. But um, when you draw an, an, um, a celebrity who passed away or whatever, of course you, you, it's a caricature and you exaggerate some things. But I have no personal real bad relationship with that person. So I will maybe not destroy her. Right? And I think the important thing is to, to look for some beautiful parts, like the eyes or a nice mouth or nice expression. The, 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 the choice of your photo is ex ex exceptionally important. You know, um, Sam, we talked about the, the, the woman I drew, drew about the, uh, from the, the, the series, the Queen's Gambit. Mm -hmm. You can draw her in any position because there are some photos, but I didn't take a photo. I, I, I went over the whole series again and I took a screenshot. Uh, to, to, I, I've been looking really well to find a good basic document. Some people were asking, hey, what photo did you use for that? I said, you're not going to find it. And that's because I wanted that position, that color or that whatever right that mm -hmm. i needed that i needed i think you can draw her when she's lying drunk on the floor as well but that was not my purpose the whole thing about that person was her genius her kind of almost madness thing right mm -hmm. so i wanted to express that but she had really very funny eyes and i wanted to, to have those eyes especially so i think it's important what you want to do with that with the person and try to find the nice things that make make your drawing beautiful after all without purposely on purpose hurting her <laughs> mm -hmm. that's a good answer okay Jan I was getting excited about the convention 
trying to get excited about our convention. I'm leaving this specific to uh, one of our fellow ISCA members. I was trying to draw her and I'm really trying to caricaturize, exaggerate her. And I'm having a hard time. So I did some highlights on, on her forehead. I'm thinking that her forehead needs to be smaller and pointier. And then all the features be more squished together like a triangle all the features look like a triangle and then i'm trying to still thin out maybe the side of her side of her face it kind of still looks too round to me so basically all the features it looks like the the facial expressions are, are larger on the bottom and then definitely forehead smaller so that's what i'm trying to to do right now with hers so I'm still in the work and process on this. I started this last night. So I, when I heard that you guys are doing an interview, I thought maybe you guys could kind of look at this and see where I could exaggerate this. I think maybe the eyes could even be bigger and come out the sides more. So uh, I'd like to see what you, I've always admired your work, you know that. So I just basically want to see how you would push this face and where, where I would do this. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. I really enjoyed it. I have, like I said, I have more questions for you, but uh, you know, I'll save those for the next one. Maybe I have to interview you. I have a lot of questions too. <laughs> okay. Okay. I love talking about myself. So yeah. yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> Sorry. Just... I, I hope I didn't talk too much myself this time. No, no, no. It was great. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Okay. I'll see you in 30 seconds at the caricature barbecue. Jan Optebeke, Jan Optebeek, everyone. Now, <laughs> up the big. Up the big. Yeah. Jan, up the big, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, <All right>. Kate. <laughs> okay, yeah. Take With care. From Kate King Davis, okay. Yay. Okay. Take Bye. care.